What is up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to show how we can use BigQuery to analyze big data at scale blazingly fast. First of all, a quick intro on BigQuery. BigQuery is Google Cloud's enterprise data warehousing solution, which is actually originally based on Dremel technology previously built by Google to index the internet. Specifically, as a data warehouse, it is easily designed for you to store, transform, analyze, and visualize data. So there are multiple ways to ingest data into BigQuery. One is batch where you get all this huge chunk of data inserted in one go. The other option is streaming where you have continuous input signals from sensors such as IoT sensors that directly plug into the data warehouse in near real time. So under Google Cloud Platform, BigQuery is already a fully managed data warehousing solution which you can use easily. So the infrastructure is actually being taken care of by Google itself. So at the end of the day, you mainly have to focus on analyzing the data. So one of the key features of BigQuery that it supports standard SQL, which is ANSI compliant. Hence, it enables anyone with the knowledge of SQL to access the big scale of BigQuery already. But just writing simple SQL queries, you are able to analyze this big chunk of data. So interacting with BigQuery is really easy using standard SQL. There are multiple different options on how you can use it. So you can directly log into Google Cloud Console, which gives an interface for you to write down SQL and run it. And you can see a lot more details with the console, with the tables and all, and the query plan execution slots, etc. So the second option is command line. So if in case you just want to run it from a terminal or a shell command, that's where it comes in handy. The third option is client libraries. Then you can just easily use Python as an example in, as a part of the client library to execute these SQL queries for big data. At scale. So once you gather a lot of this data in a central warehouse like BigQuery, as one of the steps is to make stories out of this data, visualize this data on dashboards. So BigQuery easily integrates with uh, renowned visualization tools such as Tableau, Looker, Data Studio, Power BI, etc. Already has different connectors in place as a part of these tools to easily in integrate with BigQuery. So as a next step, let's look at the pricing for BigQuery. Uh, you get two options one is pay as you go model which is actually more suitable when you're starting small and the next one is like a fixed rate where you kind of assign a lot of these slots all together as a fix and then you can use them uh, whenever you need it this is more like a, for a bigger scale when you need some kind of slots already there for you to just use all right now that we have covered the basics let's look at actual data exploration in bigquery first of all let's look at how we can load data set into bigquery BigQuery actually supports many different connectors for you to connect the data directly to the source. All right, as a next step, let's look at Google's public dataset offering as part of BigQuery. So if I hop into the public dataset page, so Google already kind of provides these more than 200 high in demand public dataset for you to use just directly using SQL actually. And then Google already provides storage, which is free. So it already stores this big chunk of data for you and you actually only pay for the queries you're doing uh, as a part of the analysis. We can go into the link and explore all the data set which is available. Uh, I will leave a link in the description too. It already has a lot of public data readily available for you to use with a click of a button and a few SQL queries. For example, the COVID-19 public data set can be used to predict the newer waves, the newer waves later on. And then it also has a lot of this crypto uh, data. In, in real world scenario, if you would want the data uh, blockchain you would need to create a server node and then connect it to the blockchain uh, it would be much, much more cumbersome and complex and expensive to do but then as a part of the public data set offering it is BigQuery is already providing all this data even though the data is not real time but the data is updated quite frequently yeah so it kind of offers all this data so for example we can look into the healthcare data set what it offers American Community Survey Area Deprivation Index public forecast of COVID-19. All right, so if you're further interested in exploring a specific data set, you can hop onto the console or look for BigQuery, go to the console, you will see a screen like this. BigQuery already has this sandbox environment for you to use without any cost. It means that you don't need any billing to be enabled before using it. You don't need to attach any card. Yeah, let's look at uh, some sample data set, which is already, already part of the BigQuery public data. So you can, you can go in what kind of data is available uh, as a part of this whole list. Uh, the data should be reflected here. So let's try to explore a few things here. So for example, uh, I was checking out the COVID data there. So let's look at COVID-19 Italy. 
and then uh, what it provides is provides data tables within that data set so this is called a data set and within a data set you'll find all these different schemas or table schemas and within that there will be the data available so yeah you can see how the data table schema looks like you can see uh, also see the details of the table size of the table number of rows and you can also preview it and then if you're interested in for doing some transformations or further analyzing it you can just hop on to the query part and try to run a query like this even though stars should not be the case so yeah so you how this is this is the way you can run a simple query on readily available public data so you can see you are not paying for the storage here like whatever the big data is stored this data is relatively very small but there are other public data set which are quite huge and that's where we would see the power of BigQuery would shine. All right, now that we have seen a few samples of the public data set available, let's look at the actual implementation. Let's try to explore uh, one of the sample data set, an e-commerce data set in BigQuery. So this public data set contains uh, the details on the Google e-commerce data set. So let's try to explore a few tables. So let's look at the all session raw table. And within that, you can see all these different attributes. So uh, this is kind of, of a similar process you're gonna you are going to follow uh, if you're trying to explore the public data set so you can see all the schema the type of the field and the mode etc it's around 6 gb in storage that's how big the data is you can click on the preview button to see the details how it looks like so this is like a sim sample e-commerce data set from the google store itself so you can see the title of the pages and then even then there are a bit more things like the categories the product name so as a sample query let's try to look into how we can see the total number of unique visitors so i have a sample query in place let's try to look at the total number of unique visitors so you can see you are counting the total uh, the counts are of product for product views and then we are looking at the distinct count of full visitor id so we'll see the unique visitors so as we can see the result there are the total number, the total count of product views is around 2 million if i'm not wrong uh, 21 million and then the total number of unique visitors is uh 3 389k so yeah then you can see the total product views and the total distinct count of visitors that's how the big that's how big the data set is you can do a lot more uh, queries by seeing the date ranges uh, where the data is ranging from and then let's try to look into the total number of visitors uh, with channel grouping so we're just grouping by the channels um, you can see in the data channel grouping is saying where the where the purchase is actually coming from so we can look at the different channel groupings and see the visit where the visitors are coming from this kind of data is kind of very important so yeah so you can see so while executing these queries you can see the query result and as well as the execution details how big query is kind of processing it so you can see how the the, the traffic is coming to this e-commerce website uh, so social referral paid search organic search etc so yeah you can see the, the unique visitors so the organic search is actually the most uh, has the highest number of unique visitors assigned to it then it's the direct ones yeah so you can see similarly we can see different product names uh, and then uh, we can see a few more things. Yeah, similarly, see if we can product names. Maybe this one is a bit more interesting. Top five products with unique, most unique views. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this one. So it says uh, it gets the uh, unique views per person. So basically, it's getting a distinct unique view by grouping by visitor ID to a product name. So it's getting distinct. Uh, so it's creating a temp view in between using with and as you can create a, a temp table within the query so it, it so the with statement kind of so the with statement kind of helps you break the query into multiple parts for example you can see the unique product views by person is one of the temp table you can as you can say is this one which is the unique product views by person and then you're doing a simple count star on the unique view count Yeah, so let me just quickly run this one. It's taking a bit of a time. So yeah, you as you can see, the uh, the tops visited products is the 
a men's cotton t-shirt the black one i guess oh sleeve here white it's a white t-shirt and then the youtube bottle infuser short sleeves cap and etc you can do a lot more queries i've skipped a few to make it quick but uh, uh, it's more like analyzing the data getting a hunch how the data set is looking like looking things uh, column by column i would say and then you'll get a, a much then you'll get a bit bit once you get a bit more sense of the data you can do a lot more complex queries and try to understand uh, what the story the data is telling so that this one would help us get the total number of distinct product orders and total number of units orders. So it's comparing the products we have views plus the orders it caught. So let's try to see. I think this one is interesting. So you can see uh, by product views, we are ordering by product views. So from top to bottom, this is the most view product. And it got uh, the number of orders it got is of 3000 plus the quantity it was like 6000 as you can see this is the most selling product all right so this is like a basic overview on how you can use the bigquery console to already analyze the public data set probably it gets us gives a sense on how you can proceed so moving on let's look at some advanced bigquery concepts even though bigquery allows sql database which like is very appealing to anyone working with the normalized data but actually big sub bigquery supports a lot of this uh, denormalized structure, hence it has a few more data types, advanced data, advanced data types, such as array, struct, and geospatial. For a transactional database, a normalized table definitely makes sense where there's a lot of transactions happening, when in, uh, reads and writes are happening. But for more of an analytical warehouse perspective, uh, denormalizing your schema actually makes much more sense. With the array and struct data types, you can denormalize your table with nested and repeated fields within uh, the single row and then it helps it really helps in improving the performance of your query uh, getting the analytical queries running really fast and getting the results very quickly so as i mentioned normally in uh, sql the data is normalized uh, that's how a list of fruit a table of fruit would look like the id and the fruit but then what if you want to assign this this fruit to each person in the list and that's how a normalized structure will look like so each rose is being assigned to a person so sally sally got four fruits and then pedrick has two two like one orange and one apple for warehousing it's it's actually the other way around you need to approach the denormalization uh, pattern in a way that uh, you're making the the tables as in a one place one stop shop for your analytical needs and thus making things much faster with bigquery so you can think of as an array being a list being assigned to a person, Sally. So you can see it's more like this. So Sally has all these raspberry, blackberry, strawberry, and cherry fruits with her. Frederick has orange and apple. So that's how the array structure kind of looks like within BigQuery. First, let's look into a sample which has an array structure. And this one is also part of the BigQuery sample data set. And you can see a lot of blank rows. The part of the reason is because there's an array structure towards the end. So as you can see within the array structure uh, for a single row, for a single visit ID, you can see these different products were accessed, the name of the product, the category and etc. So yeah, let's try to look into a few columns to understand the data better. So for a single visit ID, we can see the visit ID and the number of hits the page got. But as you can see, the query would not work because using uh, using nested data is not as simple as just running on the SQL query. So you can see hits.page.page title. So what's happening? It's hits under hits. It's trying to uh, access the page and the page title. We need to unnest this one uh, to access the data in a in a right fashion. So you need to unnest the error field to get the access to the underlying data. Uh, you're calling hits column as h, and for the h, you're trying to access the page and the page title. But the idea is you would need to unnest this repeating field called hits so that you can access the uh, the page title beneath it. And that's how the, the values are being displayed on the page title using a hyphen. All right. So, yeah, that's mostly it in terms of basic uh, usage on how you can use BigQuery on your own. I would recommend, uh, I would recommend uh, hopping onto the BigQuery console, the sandbox environment, preferably. You can just execute your queries on the go. 
and try to use these uh, data set, public data set if you really want. Another option I would suggest is for you to check out Quick Labs. I've been take, I've taken some stuff from here. So I've been, um, and you can check it out. Moving on, let's quickly look at pricing and how it kind of works. So for pricing, there are actually, the, there's a breakdown of pricing itself. Uh, previously, as I mentioned, there are two options. One is on the pay as you go, and then there's like a flat rate. So for the pay as you go model, it breaks down into storage pricing, which is cost to store the data, which you're keeping in BigQuery. The storage pricing is not as much. It's very comparable to uh, the cost of storing data in cloud storage buckets. Hence, it's very cheap. And then uh, there's another pricing for streaming inserts. So if you have a lot of streaming pipelines inserting data, I think then it, become, it can become a bit expensive to use the streaming inserts. Otherwise, inserting via batch and all is, is pretty much free. So the, the pricing is the pricing for analysis is like five dollar per TB. It's a bit confusing, but uh, let me quickly show you. So in the panel, whenever you try to execute a query, there is uh, a notification on how much data it will process. So basically, the cost is base uh, de depend. Basically, the cost is around the the amount of data you're trying to analyze. So for example, this query analyzes only like five uh, half an MB, which is much less than the the limit of one terabyte. So when the data is huge, this kind of anal uh, when the data is huge, this kind of query can run up to like 500 M gigabytes of analysis. Uh, so you need you would need to mind the type of queries you're writing down. So the best way would be not to use the star select star because the the, the cost is actually more around the the number of columns you're including. So you would need to mind that. But uh, in all, uh, it won't be as expensive the if the data set is not huge. But even if the data set is huge, there are ways you can improve the performance and reduce the cost, which is using uh, partitioning and clustering methods, which will help you reduce the, the amount of data you have in every SQL query. Hence, you would be able to mitigate the, the costs there. But yeah, I would cover this in more detail probably later. That's mostly it in terms of this video.